Hi there, I'm Sunny from Spinspire back again for another HTML web development tutorial. In today's video, I'd like to explain Ajax, which is one of the most powerful and interesting tools in web development. Before I hop into VS Code, I think that there's a lot to explain today. So first, I want to discuss the terminology and how everything works. So what is Ajax? Well, it's an acronym standing for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. This is a multi-step process. First, some event will trigger this process, we'll say the click of a button. Then an object is created and it sends a request to the server. The request gets processed and a response is sent back to the page. This response is interpreted and whatever action was programmed in occurs, like the changing of some text on the page. The great thing is that it allows you to get data from a server and update a page after a page has been loaded without having to reload it at all. That's really powerful, and it's not something that all sites can do. It's very, very useful. So now, let's make something using Ajax. Well, for this we're going to need a server to make requests to. Just for fun, I found a database of Chuck Norris jokes, and we're going to make a page that can randomly generate them by pulling from that database. So as you can see here, we've got the Internet Chuck Norris database. And if I scroll down here, I have a way to fetch a random joke by accessing this API. So if I plug this into my search, as you can see this pulls up a joke, there are two types of people in the world, people that suck and Chuck Norris. If I reload, as you can see, it makes a new joke. All arrays Chuck Norris declares are of infinite size because Chuck Norris knows no bounds. As you can see, every time we want a new joke, we have to reload the page. That's non-Ajax. So let's hop into VS Code and create something that will be able to access these jokes and give us a new joke without having to reload every single time. So just like last time, I make my boilerplate with an exclamation point and a tab. I'm going to retitle this to Ajax Tutorial. Now, what I'm going to do is, for this, I'm going to create a piece of text, and then every time we click on that piece of text, it will change into one of the jokes. So I'm going to say this paragraph I'm going to write, click me. I'm going to give it an ID equal to P1, and then I'm going to say on click, which we discussed uh, in greater detail in the last video, but at the most simple level, we're telling to, on the click of this text, use the function called get joke. So let's just go ahead and open it with Live Server really quick. So obviously it's not going to do anything right now. We have to create this function, get joke. So now we do that by going into script, and here we can function get joke, double parentheses, double squiggly brackets, and now we get to define our function. So the big thing with this function is that we are going to take this text, and whenever this text is clicked, we're going to change it into a joke from the server. So first, we want to know which piece of text to edit. So we're going to say const p p1 equals document dot get element by id p1. The next thing I want to do though is I'm going to feed the IDE the URL of our API. So as you can see, constant URL equals this, which is right here. Of course, this is how we're going to start making um, requests to the server. The next thing that we want to do is use a function called fetch, and then say fetch the URL. Sorry, before I continue, I just remembered. Make sure you put quotation marks around these. So what fetch is going to do is it's essentially going to make contact with the server, and when we do that, what fetch actually returns as a function isn't technically a response from the server, it's the promise of a response from the server. So what we have to do is say fetch, but then we have to say then. So essentially, fetch something from the server, get the promise, and then when you get the promise of a response, do the function called response. We are now going to put a squiggly bracket here, and this all has to happen now after we get this response. We're going to say response.json dot then function obj object then we're going to put in another squiggly bracket so before i continue to finish up this method i want to explain what exactly we just did we made contact with the server we told it to when it was ready 
use the function response, try to get a response from the server. We told it to format this response as a JSON object. JSON is a file format. It's essentially, as you can see here, this is a JSON object. Everything is in name and value pairs, and these are all different attributes of the object. So this object has one, two, three, four, five different values associated with it, and the names are type, value, ID, joke, and categories. From there, separated by the column are the actual values. So the type of this joke is success, or the value of this joke is Chuck Norris's unit tests don't run, they die. So we, res we get the response as a JSON object, and then once that actually happens, we get the function object. We get the actual object, and now we change p1.innerText, or the text of p1, to be obj.value.text joke. So what does this mean? This means that take the returned object, so just for an example we'll say this is the returned object, find the value, which is this, and then in that value find the joke. So as you can see value is all of this, so now in here find a joke, which is this, and then change the text to this value. So if we go ahead and hit save and this reloads, now when we click it, boom. Jean-Claude Van Damme once kicked Chuck Norris's... I... hold on, can't say that one. Uh, one minute. Chuck Norris knows the value of null, and he can sort by it too. And there we go. As you can see, we don't have to reload the page. I can get a new joke whenever I want, and that's Ajax. However, there is another way to write a function very similar to this, but in a much more readable and much more simplistic way. So as you can see, we sort of have this block here, and this is very, very easy to mess up, and it's very, very easy to get wrong. So there's actually a way that we can do it without writing all this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another piece of text. Uh, I'm going to say, click me to, and then I'm going to write, I'm going to give it an ID equals P2, and I'm going to say on click, call the function get joke two. Now I'm going to create the function get joke two. Now the way that this is going to work is we're going to use something called async await. So first we're going to say this function async. We have to use that keyword there. Async of course is short for asynchronous and it lets this know that essentially it's it's working in the same way as this where we're sort of waiting on the server but it's going to be much easier to read and easier to write. We're going to basically use the same first two lines, actually. These are going to be identical, except we just want to make sure const p1 here is getting the right piece of text. We want it to get this piece of text, so we're going to change that to idp2. Now is where things get a little bit different. We're going to say constant response equals await fetch url. So what we're saying now is instead of doing fetch.then and opening this multiple bracket sort of hierarchy that gets very confusing, we're essentially saying fetch the URL, await the response, and so instead of returning like fetch normally would, instead of returning a promise, await the actual response and just give us that instead. And now const obj, it's going to be the exact same thing, right? await response.json. And then our last line is going to be the same. p1.innerText equals obj.value.joke, just like last time. So if we hit save, as you can see, this one still works, right? And then as we click on this one, it also works. So once again, to recap, what we did was we used this function async await, and that is the type of function you would call this. You would call this an async await function because we are telling it to await the response instead of telling it to return a promise and then do something else. So we make our response await from the fetch, and then we make our object await from the response, and then we just set it to our text. And as you can see, these work, and they're both they're both equally valid approaches, uh, but async await is slightly more easy to write and easy to read, so I personally prefer it. 
that's going to be all for this video. Of course, you can do a lot more, just like last time. You can do a lot more with this than sort of this very simple aspect of it, but this is just one example to sort of get you started with it. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you loved it, consider subscribing. We have a lot more planned like this, and we'd love if you tagged along with us. That's going to be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.